Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and in today's video, I'm going to show how I made this art journal layout, starting with uh, just some text from an old book and then building up layer by layer. One of my art goals for a while has been to incorporate more writing into my pages, quotes and other writing that inspires me and makes me think. This is a quote from Henry David Thoreau. It seems an age since I took walks and wrote in my journal, and when shall I revisit the glimpses of the moon? I don't know about you, but I feel this way a lot of the time. He's one of my favorite writers, and he lived in New England in the 1840s and 50s. I'm currently rereading his diaries. Join me, and I'm going to talk first about selecting images and printing images. Then I'm going to talk about collage techniques, how and why images go where they go, and what images I didn't use and why. If you like journal arts, altered books, vintage books, paper, and other ephemera, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notifications, and you'll have more of them in your life. Now let's go make a layout. After I chose my quote, I started thinking about what images would bring it to life for me. When I make an altered book, I always use original paper ephemera. But when I'm working in my art journal, it's more loose and fun, and it's a place where I'm using pages to stalk inspiration. So I'm using papers from farther afield. That could be from magazines, greeting cards, calendars, and similar whatnot. I also use things that I print up myself. This is a mixture of two. I'm, I'm using some papers that are from my physical paper stash and some images that are from my digital paper stash. These scraps are from wildflower in illustrations that are like this. And I use these a lot. I have, these are from older projects and I've just, where I rough tore the pieces and use them for embellishing or backgrounds. So these were just in the scrap box. I have made printable scans of these, some of these wildflower prints, and they are free and they are on my website. I also made a scan of this guy. I knew that I'm gonna want a focal point that is um, wistful because he's thinking about glimpsing the moon. So I had this French postcard of Piero, and I made a printable scan of this. It's also free and on my website. But I might be using this lady. She's also very wistful, and I love the sepia color. And she's part of some cabinet cards that I got recently. And I have made this into a lot of scans that's available on Etsy. And finally, these guys, they're bees. And I love me some bees. Thoreau was a nature writer, and so I felt like some whimsical bees were going to be right on the money. Plus, I can layer them and just use them with the wildflowers to get this kind of nature-y thing going on. This print comes from a physical collection that I have from a book called Goldsmith's Animated Nature. And my copy, well, I have several copies. This one's from 1875. And it's got insects and butterflies and bees and birds. There's some hummingbirds. 
And I also have this lot on Etsy. So I'm linking to all of those, the free ones and the ones on Etsy. The links are in the text below the video. And of course, I'm going to need a moon. So I went online and I used the keywords celestial moon vintage images, something like that. And these were two that caught my eye. You can see that I printed them in two different sizes. And you can see this lady, I've got her in different sizes. That is because I've been doing this for years and I still find it difficult to gauge what I'm looking at on the screen and how it's going to size up on the paper that I'm then going to use in a layout. So if it's one that I really like, I tend to um, just make different sizes and it's okay because if I don't use it in today's project, it goes in the box for another day. I've also printed up my quote in several different font sizes. Again, I just can't visualize how that's going to look in the layout, so I'm giving myself a lot of choices. I've used two kinds of paper here. One is printer paper. Now, you have to use what you got, but if you can, think about looking for a higher grade of printer paper. I use HP Premium. It's heavier and brighter but most brands have a, a better brand and it doesn't cost that much more and it really makes your images pop, but use what you got. I'm also using tracing paper. Tracing paper is similar to vellum, but lighter and it's semi-transparent so that when it's glued down, you can see whatever is underneath. And since for me, that's usually text, it gives you uh, some contrast and layer and a lot of interest to the eye, some mystery. You can get this in craft and art supply stores and usually office supply stores. Finally, about printing, when you choose your image, you click on print or the printer icon and it gives you some choices, such as, do you want to print in portrait or landscape? How many copies do you want? In most printers, there is going to be an option that says printer properties. Find that and be sure that you click on that because it's going to offer you different resolutions. Usually it's going to be draft quality, normal quality, or best. Choose best. And that way it's going to use more ink and give you a more intense image. Now I'm going to look at different ways of combining and configuring these elements uh, for different potential layouts. I want to start with a border going across both pages made of these wildflower pages. I've just rough torn them, made them about the same width. And if I glue this down, it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to um, offset the severity of the text. It's also going to bring the viewer's eye across both pages. So instead of having page, page, you're going to have one canvas and one layout. I have placed this at optical third, visual third. I could put it right in the middle, but the rule of visual thirds in composition says that if you put it at one third, position it one third on the page, either there or at the bottom, it actually adds more interest to the eye. So I'm going to put it there. I have my bees that uh, they're on the translucent paper. And again, I've rough torn this on the diagonal because if you've seen my videos, you know that I like to anchor my pages on the corners sometimes. And that looks pretty good. It's a little bit busy, but I like that. It's, it's got the, you can see the text underneath and you can see some of the foliage. 
So that's looking good. I also thought about that, which does look nice and it anchors that corner, but um, I'm not sure. That might be too much, too much greenery. Now, let's look at our moon and choose a moon because that's going to have a lot to do with what happens with the other elements. This is the large celestial moon. I'm liking this because the the colors in the uh, the circle around the outside are pretty much picking up the same colors that are here with the bees. So that again, draws the eye across and connects these two things. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put my quote here. And that will look better when it's actually glued down, it will, the whitish parts will disappear. Although I haven't completely decided, I might just use this white one anyway, and then try to push it back in the page. But we'll start here. I'm already pretty kind of happy with what I'm seeing, but let's see what else we can do. Pull this up. Yeah, I like that because she, I know Thoreau said this, but she could be the one who is dreaming of walking and writing in her journal and glimpsing the moon. She does have that far away look in her eye. But what happens if we switch that out with the blue moon? This actually, the color isn't really picking up anywhere else, but it does look pretty and really adds some interest and texture to the page. But she doesn't really go with that one. Let's try the smaller one. And now we have Piro. And I really like how he looks with the blue moon. Again, there's something very wistful that, that fits the whole theme. I'm gonna try it without the border because it's pretty, but it's kind of taking up a lot of valuable real estate on the page. I'm also going to try the bees that are not on translucent paper. They're a little bit more solid. And I'm happy with that too. Maybe we could combine the moons and really lean, lean, lean into that lunar strangeness. What if we really go to town with the moon images? It's looking a little bit surrealistic now. Uh, and I really like, again, the colors. I don't know, should we go back to the abstract bees? The translucent bees, sorry. Yeah, I think that's more uh, consistent with the text coming through the ends. I want to try something else first. I have some squirrels, or as we say in Britain, squiddles, squiddles, squiddles. These are also from Goldsmith's Animated Nature, but a different volume. And I, again, I like how it's picking up the nature feel, which is very true to Thoreau. And we could put these together, maybe, and, I don't know, how's that going to go? Well, it's not bad. It's, it's different. It's just a different idea. Uh, I'm going to think about this one. But again, the whole point is you just need to move your images around and see how they look to the eye, see what's talking to you. And I'm going to finish this off and we'll start gluing down some images.
Before I commit to gluing this down, let's look at a couple of other layout options. I'm kind of thinking she could go here, but she's going over the quote. That's not going to work. So how about if we use the little, the little image? That does look kind of pretty and, and winsome, which suits the quote. I don't know maybe two different faces. I'm not really sure that's, I think it might just, they might distract from each other. I do have this, I got rid of the squirrels, but I do have this one flying squirrel on his own. And I like how this makes it look as though he's, he's revisiting the glimpses of the moon. Yeah. See, so we could do him like this. Maybe he's going to go up and out. like this, that composition wise does work. And it looks as if he is in flight. I think it's interesting. If you do it like this, it looks like he's coming for Monsieur Pierrot. So we're not going to do that. That's, that's a different layout. Maybe like that. Gluing tracing paper is tricky. Because once you get the adhesive on there, it is going to start curling up. It has a mind of its own, and you're going to have to work fast and firm. Uh, you're still going to get glue on your fingers, so um, that's the way that goes. I have marked off with pencil where I want this image to go, again, so I can work quickly. And I'm going to add the glue now. Um, this is an acrylic gel medium. But you can also use a PVA craft glue or Mod Podge or whatever you got. I'm going to put this on a piece of grease proof paper. It's kind of like wax paper. And here we go. And make sure you get a pretty generous layer there because as I said, the ends are going to want to pull up on you like that. Yeah, I want this there. I want that one on top. Now, what I'm going to do is cover it with another sheet, a clean sheet of greaseproof paper and take some kind of flat edge and really get that on and flat. That's how you can keep it from rolling and curling. Now I can see a little bit of excess glue came out there. So I'm going to take a damp paper towel and go around and pick that up. This is starting to bubble. That will probably go away when I weight it down, which I'm going to do when everything's on the page. I'm happy with the layout and I am now going to add some embellishing. I have gone round all of the major elements in the piece with a charcoal pencil. And now I can just smudge that charcoal line like this and it gets messy and smudgy but it also really makes the page pop the images on the page pop i'm also going to go around the quote with my charcoal pencil and just kind of Give it a messy frame like that. Almost looks like I've been doodling in my notes. Now I want to add a little more color. So I think we can bring out this blue. I have a blue stamp pad. 
And I thought we might, since we're going to pull the blue over to this side, go ahead and continue with the blue color wise and the bees theme wise. I have this stencil of a honeycomb. So we're going to I have a blending tool. This is by Tim Holtz. And I am going to load up the blending tool. You don't have to have one of these. You can use um, a makeup sponge. It will do the job just fine. And I'm just going to go around and add a few honeycombs. Working in the stencil with the rubber... Uh, stamp pad. I don't want it to be symmetrical and perfect. It's supposed to be messy and pretty. Now I am bringing it down to the bees, tapping it in there a little bit too. Now I'm going to add some mark making and I'm using, uh, this is a Derwent XL chunky graphite stick. They are water soluble, but today I'm just going to use it, uh, without activating it with water. You could also use a soft chalk pastel or whatever you got. And again, I'm going to smudge because these smudge so beautifully and just makes the color look a little bit more mysterious. Let's add one more. And then I'll come over here and do just a little bit on this. And I'm just going to kind of echo that, that curve. of the moon. Pull that down a little bit. I really like this. It, it's giving it a little bit of movement. And so I'm going to echo that on this side as well. And just pick up the lines of that oval shape around the quote. And then the rays. So what that does is actually give a little fun symmetry to the whole layout. Here and here. Here and here. I went round the whole piece using the chunky stick like this. And again, then I just blended with my fingers, especially around the corners, and it's made a frame around the whole piece. It really pulls it together, makes it one thing. There is uh, some text below this video. If you want to check that out, you can find out more about book and paper arts. Until next time. Happy making.